If you don't know already, some of the current most popular LLM benchmarks are absolute dog water. Just how bad is it? Well, in one of the biggest language modeling benchmarks called MMLU, 57% of questions contain errors in the virology subset according to this research. I mean, that is the worst subset of them all, but for a benchmark as widely used as this one, shouldn't they all be correct in the first place? What's even funnier is that if you just simply reorder the questions, some models' performances even decrease drastically. In the worst case, it is up to 26% accuracy decrease, which if you think about it, it's kind of crazy. From a more cynical and critical perspective, this may imply that these models are trained on the benchmarks and memorizing the answers. And even if they are memorizing, it just shows how incapable and inflexible these models are, especially when it comes to doing some basic reasoning to comprehend the reordering of the questions. Well, the underperformance of the models may not completely be the benchmark's problem as the benchmark could have been leaked onto the internet and got accidentally trained on, but the idea of switching orders of the ground truth would alter an AI's performance is more of what I want to highlight about, as this is a sign of how terrible LLMs are, especially at generalization or even reasoning. There are ways we can temporarily cope with this, like using HubSpot's free bundle of resources for using ChatGPT to help you realize its true capability. The bundle contains a comprehensive guide to enhance your work productivity with AI, which is a perfect guide for anyone that wants to grow their businesses or careers careers while keeping up with these rapidly growing AI technologies. Aside from the 37-page in-depth guide that they provide for free, there are also other useful visualizations such as ChatGPT flowcharts, instruction templates, content refinement checklists, and a few more. My favorite part is the over 100 prompts they have that will help you get the most out of ChatGPT whether you're a beginner or an advanced user. So I highly recommend you to check out the free bundle using the link down in the description and start growing and scaling successfully. Thank you HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Anyways, this brings us to the Alice in Wonderland paper where they prove that even within the same type of problem, when the numbers are changed or the problem slightly varies, LLMs would fail miserably. They would perform so bad that in their proposed AI reasoning benchmark, well, the hardest one, the best model only achieved mere 3% accuracy, which are GPT-4 June 13th version and Claude 3 Opus. GPT-4 O got 1.5% and most of the other ones are completely floored at 0%, which is very interesting. Keep in mind that these questions aren't hard for humans to do. It might just take you a bit of time. So if you're bothered enough, feel free to pause the video here and read one of the questions that Claude 3 Opus actually got right. Aside from how confident the LLMs would be when it gets the answer wrong. And what gave you the confidence? Um, delusion. It will usually try to back itself up with plausible sounding explanations, and at the end, it will just be kind of like confabulations, which is definitely not good in being helpful. So it is nice knowing that there currently exists a better and more robust benchmark, which would be a good indicator of a model's capability, and basically a better tangible indicator on how far AIs really are compared to actual human capabilities that are not knowledge-based. Like look at this, can you imagine an AI being able to do this? Only humans would be able to come up with something this random and absurdly funny. But I mean, if an AI can truly do this, it actually might be so jover for us. So for the sake of burning down rainforests, having more people losing their jobs, and making the rich richer, how can this be improved? Well, one of the ways for reasoning to improve is to achieve better generalization. From just looking at the MMLU reordering problem and the Alice in Wonderland paper, I think it is reasonable to say that reasoning is a sub-problem of generalization, where being able to reason in different contexts, abstraction, or even swap out some numbers and still be able to reason to arrive at a correct answer is a type of generalization capability which human has and AI still lacks. For example, all we have to do is to learn the principle of how to write good abstraction codes, then we can reason ourselves easily into how to organize our own codes into good abstraction practices. So improving generalization might be the next big barrier AI or even LLMs would need to surpass. And usually we would think, yeah, maybe we need more data variations, larger sets of data, or even completely synthesized data to overcome the generalization problem, but exploring those aspects are a bit elusive and not concrete enough. And let me tell you, there's actually a much simpler solution to this, and that is overfitting. Yes, that one concept where it's always illustrated with spiky looking line graphs you would typically see in data visualization. And no, not just lightly overfit the models, but overfitting it extremely. This is a very interesting phenomenon called grokking, where when given some very high quality data, if you extend 
extend the training far beyond the point of overfitting, it can lead to improvements in the generalization capabilities. This effect typically emerges only after continuing training for about 10 times the number of iterations required to reach overfitting, so it is highly impractical and expensive to achieve in larger models. This phenomenon was first observed in 2021, where researchers found out that long after the training data is fitted, the validation would start to increase seemingly out of nowhere. Well, it certainly is overfitting, but it's not really the same. The name Grok has its own unique origins too. The word itself is actually first coined from a book called Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert A. Heinlein, where the theme of the book can be seen as an extended definition of the term Grok, which literally means to drink, but more broadly, it means to understand profoundly and intuitively. Then it made a connection with machine learning and turned into an actual ML concept due to the fascinating meaning this word has. By the way, Elon's Grok LLM is probably named after the book and not related to the ML concept that we are talking about today. Later on, many other theory-oriented research have also tried to justify the grokking phenomenon as the previously known double descent phenomenon, where it means as model size increases, validation performance initially improves, then worsens, and finally improves again. Yet, double descent shows a non-monotonic trend in validation performance with increase in model size, while grokking shows a sudden improvement in validation performance after a long period of stagnation. So with grokking being not fully characterized and still shrouded in mystery, there has been some very interesting research in the past few months that aims to fully characterize it, and even take advantage of it to improve reasoning and generalization capabilities in AI. But wait a second, why would someone choose a method that would require 10 times more computations than using workaround techniques like chain of thoughts or inner dialogues which are essentially free? Even Claude 3.5 uses chain of thoughts that is hidden from the users to improve its performance. Okay, so while these methods of having models explicitly verbalize their thoughts and reasoning steps are usually good at improving task performance, since the more existing tokens there are, the easier token prediction is for the model, this method is still not the perfect solution in the long run. Other than the fact that verbalizing makes the models become more vulnerable to jailbreaks, as one of the most common jailbreaks are through writing fake system instructions, it also doesn't change the fact that these methods are not available during large-scale pre-training where the model's core capabilities are acquired. As we have seen from the Alice in Wonderland paper, having models relying on methods that use explicit verbalization for reasoning and generalization have led to the model's false confidence in providing an incorrect answer while performing extremely poorly. And this issue could be linked to how they were never pre-trained on these type of skills. So I think it is reasonable to say that it is the model's ability to reason implicitly that determines how well it can acquire structured and compressed representations of the facts and the rules from the data. And without this skill, it would usually lead to redundant knowledge storage, struggle to update information efficiently, and most importantly, fundamentally lack systematic generalization capabilities across their knowledge base. So if at this point I still haven't convinced you why grokking is amazing and necessary, and why the current state-of-the-art models are still a long way off to becoming anything close to AGI, you owe me a like on this video. So here comes the paper, Grok Transformers Are Implicit Reasoners. In this research, the authors have found out that the vanilla transformers can indeed learn to reason implicitly, but this skill will only robustly emerge after grokking has been achieved. Additionally, they were only able to achieve generalization in one of the two types of reasoning, which is the comparison type. This type involves comparing attribute values of entities such as determining who is older, Trump or Biden, when the given age data is something the model has never seen. However, for the other type, which is composition, that requires the model to chain different pieces of facts together, such as combining Barack Obama's wife is Michelle and Michelle is born in 1964, to deduce to Barack's wife is born in 1964 is still not possible to achieve for data that the model has never seen before, aka out of distribution generalization. Then to answer the question of why it cannot perform compositional reasoning, the researchers dug deeper into the model throughout the process of models achieving grokking, and they found out the model would form a generalizing circuit during grokking. But this circuit stores atomic facts in separated regions for different steps of composition. So this vanilla transformer architecture then prevents the model from applying compositional reasoning to novel combinations of facts not seen during training. So while this paper doesn't fully solve the out of distribution generalization problem for compositional reasoning, they do propose some potential interesting solutions like cross-layer memory sharing, which would act as a proper mechanism for sharing memory across different layers of the transformer, or a variant of the universal transformer that shares 
parameters between the upper and lower layers, which they have shown to indeed achieve grokking, but at a much slower pace for out of distribution data. So maybe when Mr. Zuck said that when Llama 370B never stopped learning, even after they trained it three or four times past the chinchilla optimum is not copium, and it might have been achieving semi-grokking even though it is not obvious on the evaluation numbers, maybe because the current existing benchmarks suck? Like if we go back again to the Alice in Wonderland benchmark where everyone else got 0% on the hardest one, if you look past the Claude 3 Opus and GPT-4 being the top scoring ones, the next best model is actually Llama 370B Chat. Keep in mind that it has a 0.2% difference between the models that are at least 3 to 5 times larger. So this would probably imply two things. The first is that Llama 370B is actually a really well-trained model, the which is also on the way to achieve grokking. And second, these super large flagship models are actually insanely undertrained that a 70B can match their reasoning capabilities. Well, good data definitely still played a huge role. In the grokking paper, they did mention how pre-training on large-scale internet text data would not necessarily facilitate useful grokking at all. I mean, it does obviously agree with the concept of garbage in, garbage out, but I was kind of blown away after I made this connection of grokking in Llama 3. Okay, but even if the proposed grokking could work and improve the model, it still doesn't change the fact that the process and the money that it will suck up for an LLM to achieve it is still incredibly expensive. Like if we take the numbers from the implicit reasoning paper, we are potentially talking about a 10 times increase in the training budget just to only perfect the comparison type out of distribution generalization. So let me introduce you to another paper published a week after the previous grokking paper called GrokFast. The major achievement of GrokFast is that they have made an implementation which can accelerate grokking by 50 times, which is absurd. How they have achieved this was by assuming the change of value of each model's parameter over the training iterations as a random stochastic signal over time. And by converting stuff into the frequency domain, it means that Fourier transform can be used to break down the signal for further interpretation, in which they found out that they could decompose the parameter trajectories under gradient descent into two types, a fast varying overfitting yielding component and a slow varying generalization inducing component. They then hypothesize that the delayed generalization of grokking is a consequence of the slow varying component within the parameter update. And to accelerate the slow varying component, they figured that amplifying the low frequencies of the gradient by adding a lower pass filter signal to itself would yield a speed up in achieving grokking. And in their best test case, it has sped up the process by a staggering 50 times. With this algorithm that they have, which could even be applied to diverse tasks like images, languages, and graphs, it certainly gives hope of of AI finally being able to grasp the true generalizing and reasoning capabilities to achieve ASI. And then we will finally get the chance to say, the job market is dead, here are 5 ways to utilize AI to not become homeless. And let me tell you, one of the ways to avoid this right now is to subscribe to my newsletter where I go through the latest AI research and explain them simply. Reading these would definitely help you improve your reading comprehension since the topics are both challenging and fascinating. So in a few years when we are given food tickets, we can read their terms of service like it's complete light work. Thank you guys for watching, that was satire. Am I just bad at this? A lot of people have been complaining about my satire being actually what I mean. But anyways, a big shout out to Andrew Laschelias, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Deacon, Alex Maries, Migulim, Fafau, Robert Zaviasa, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.